tonight's video where I hope you're all doing really, really well and boy, oh boy, am I excited for this video because we are going to be doing a combination of a mukbang eating video combined with a video game ramble and we are going to be rambling about my top 10 games of all time. Now this video is heavily inspired by a fantastic channel and a good friend ASMR Collect and Play who recently did a cracking list, a cracking top 10 video games of all time combined with ASMR in the car. So if you like car based ASMR combined with a video game ramble, make sure to check his video and channel if you haven't already after this video. So I am very hungry. This is in fact my tea. The pizza that we're going to be having, I'll show you. It's quite saucy. There we have it. Maybe that will be the thumbnail. But it is. Well, I'll actually get the box and tell you specifically what type of pizza it is. It is a... with the 
this uh, game series. It's an absolute belter of a game. I'll just talk about them both. It's a four player or eight player co-op uh, zombie sort of survival game where you uh, basically have to get from A to B and um, and survive the, the the world of of zombies and you've got some fantastic characters in there all really quite distinct uh, Bill and Zoe from the first one really recall but um, each campaign there's I think four or five campaigns um, and each one is kind of like a movie um, it's all sort of shot in a in a movie uh, sort of stylized way like posters for the level and you effectively have to get uh, you're trying to get extracted from wherever you are and so each each sort of level in the campaign you're leaving one safe house and trying to make it alive to the next safe house all the way to the end of the campaign where you have this big standoff and you you know try and escape in a really cool vehicle sometimes it's a plane it's a boat it's a tank some really really cool cool stuff but what makes a game really fun a the co-op element um there's no aim down sight so it's very arcadey um you've got really cool weapons um you've got melee uh, weaponry and you've got two different sort of healing mechanisms you've got bills which sort of give you a temporary health boost and then you've got a med pack which sort of properly heals you but you're not just facing these sort of uh, sort of aimless zombies you've got special zombies as well um, you've got a hunter which kind of look like a chaff like a hooded zombie that bounces on you and just starts you know, attacking you and you're sort of immobilized so you need your teammates to save you you've got a boomer which is this big bloated zombie which spews bile on you and that attracts the horde a zombie horde you've got a witch which is um you hear her in the level she's crying and you have to be careful because if you turn your flashlight on her yeah she'll go mental at you and again i believe it calls a horde but she goes mental you've got a smoker which has got a big tongue and it wraps around you and drags you away until it can grab you so it could be on a rooftop and it just uh, sort of licks you from a farm and yeah the, the levels were so fun uh, amazingly good fun but yeah, you had a multiplayer aspect because you could do 4v4 where four of you actually play as special zombies the you know, the boomer the licker uh, sorry the boomer the smoker the hunter and you can um and you have to basically try and get the, the human um the humans um, and then they also had a really good mode survival mode where you'd get you know jerry cans and bite bombs and basically just try and survive in this one sort of map area for as long as possible So many. 
many hours into it, it's got to make the list. Just for now, so I've not brought a glass of water. Result. This is a, a game I still play yeah, quite regularly nowadays. Um, but it's a, it's a multiplayer um, you know, centric um, game. And again, it's by Ubisoft. But back to back Ubisoft. And it is Rainbow Six Siege. Now the Tom Clancy, is it Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege? I think it is. It's part of it, it must be. It's part of Ubisoft, a sort of shooter. Shooter franchise, Rainbow Six. Uh, sort of Tom Clancy. 
games like uh, back in the day like Rainbow Six Vegas and Rainbow Six Vegas 2 which was really cool because you could create an operator and I think you could upload your face and you had really cool game modes like Terrorist Hunt and really cool cover based mechanics but uh, Rainbow Six Siege is a cracking uh, multiplayer game where it's effectively attack versus defend uh, the, the objective and you players. I've actually done a video on this I think in the last six months or so where you play as an, an operator and whether you're an uh, attacking operator or a defensive operator you have sort of special skills and equipment that you um, sort of use to give yourself a tactical advantage um, to complete your objective and it's it's a slower paced multiplayer game it's a slower paced shooter it's more tactical um comms is a, a really important aspect visuals as well so whether you're attacking and you're sending in your drone camera to capture visuals so you can um, sort of see where people have set up traps or more um you know, set up uh, your defensive posts around the objectives and to see where the your defenders are or if you're defending and making use of your cameras around the, the map environment and you know, ensuring that you're putting your traps in the best place um, and you can be you know you could be an offensive defense um, or you could be you're quite a cautious attacker I have such during uh, sort of lockdown during sort of COVID, we um, I play so uh, I play with sort of, uh, sort of four of my mates, you know, three three four of my mates, and it's teams of five. So oftentimes we're you know ninety percent of the team, which is great because you know from a communication aspect, um, sunk almost you know three hundred three hundred or so hours into the game, and it's just. I thought it just never gets boring. There's a great map selection, varied maps in different scenarios, different settings. You know, uh, you're on a plane, you're on a boat, you're in a mansion, you're in a barn, you're in all these different uh, different locations, and there's different routes that you can take as well. So you can really approach uh, and plan out your def defense or offense tailor-made to yourself and the strategies that you come up with as a team is your based off your selection of operators and it's excellent fun um, not your not your typical first-person shooter Franchising. <laughs> 
survival guides and you've got these really cool guides telling you how you would survive a zombie apocalypse. I've got the Walking Dead graphic novels. And always wanted a game that, um, that you'd play and you, you know, it's, it's a bit of a survival but you're trying to, you know, fend off against these hordes of zombies. And I remember getting the demo for Resident Evil 5 back in the day, the 360 generation where games would always, you know, you often come out with a demo and you could play the demo for hours and hours. And I'd never heard of Resident Evil 1, suddenly, you know, you're in, um, again, you're in, an, oh, I remember the African country, but you're on the continent. And then you're playing as this jacked out Chris Redfield, your massive arms with a pistol. I always thought the pistol was really cool. And then you suddenly go into this market, and there's this executioner, big guy, kind of like Pyramid Head from Silent Hill, but not quite. Executes. Um, and then suddenly catches you with your um, teammate, Sheva Alamar. And, um, yeah, and then you're then sort of trying to defend yourself. You're trying to, you know, find ammo, because ammo is scarce in this game. That's a survival horror. Because um, the demo came out near my birthday, so I remember asking for Resident Evil 5 for my birthday. And I was you know, very lucky enough, I got the uh, steel book edition, really nice steel book, and the strategy guide. And I remember for my birthday, um, yeah, I had a mate to uh, sleep over, or to sleep over. And we were just in co-op, <laughs> Resident Evil 5. And you know, you would shoot these blue plates around uh, a level that would unlock costumes. Um, yeah, you collect jewels and sort of, you know, um, uh, coins and stuff so you could upgrade your equipment. And all these different things. And you had really cool bosses. The Ouroboros. And then a really cool finale at the end where you find Albert Wesker in a volcano. But it was just epic and really good fun. Um, that got me more into the world of Resident Evil. Uh, you know, the movies, live action, and the animated movies. Later on, you know, the other games. Um, uh, Resident played a bit of Resident Evil 6, but 7 and 8, and then go back and playing 2, 3. Um, I've not played 4, but I need to, but it was just... The one thing I regret never doing is I never was able to complete the campaign in under seven hours because if you did it under seven hours you'd unlock an RPG with unlimited ammo and that just looked awesome but you know you'd finish a level and you'd get a rank you know BCAS rank absolute awesome so um, we're now getting on to the end of the first half of the list as we move on to as we move on to number six it's going to be a bit of a longer video but hey it's actually going to be uploaded a little bit late today because I'm, I'm recording it on the um, on the day it's going out but make up for it with an extra long vid so number six we now jet set um, back to the uh, the tropics, to the fantastical island of Isle Delfino, because in sixth place we've got the absolute mega GameCube classic, Super Mario Sunshine. Gamecube games, and we've um, to be fair, I think we've only got 
a formational console for me growing up. It was my childhood console. And Super Mario Sunshine is just an absolute treat. Visually, it's you know, phenomenal. Um, it mechanically, you, know, you play as Mario going on a on a holiday, on a vacation with Peach and you know the Toadstool Gang, where it turns out on this mystical island of a Delfino, which is shaped like a dolphin. Which, a fun fact, is in reference to the fact that the gamekeeper was codenamed Project Dolphin. Fun fact. But you land on this uh, island and are immediately arrested and it turns out that this Shadow Mario has been going around vandalising the island's beautiful spots with graffiti and blocking the shine sprites and the shine sprites are the island's energy source. And so you are tasked with cleaning up the island with your with your flood, F L U, double D, nice. Um, but it's a, it's a, an, an AI. It's a living water tank. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Who, um, you know, becomes your companion for the game and you know helps you and guides you. But what's really cool is you've got like a, a spray nozzle. You've got a jetpack nozzle. You've got a rocket nozzle, you've got these different nozzles you use to get around the different areas of the world. You've got the main plaza, you've got a beach, you've got a hotel, um, you've got a an amusement park. All these, all these incredible locations. Uh, there's even like a, a little a sort of country village and you've, um, and I think the, the local residents are Piantas. Um, and they're these really cool characters. You've got a harbour, there's so many cool, um, um, two harbours. You've got a bay and a harbour. You've got all these different world areas, really cool levels within them. You know, Yoshi, Yoshi is about as well. You ride on these bloopers as well. You surf on bloopers. It's just absolutely brilliant. It's, um, I think it's madness that there hasn't been a sequel. There's not been a sequel to Super Mario Sunshine, personally. But, yeah. Potentially one of the best games on the GameCube, and, yeah, I'd like to say it's, um, yeah, potentially could have featured higher on my list, but, yeah, we, we, we put it where we put it. Super Mario Sunshine. Cheers. Earth's core called the Locust and you play 
is a, a COG, uh, which is a coalition of ordered governments. Who are these? We have jacked up guys with really cool armor. And the most distinctive thing about, or one of the most distinctive things about the game is the main weapon you had, which was a lancer. And it had a chainsaw bayonet. So you had this really cool rifle and then a chainsaw element. And when you'd fight these sort of orc like um, locust, you could chainsaw your, your, your enemies in half. Like, how cool is that? But only that. It had an awesome cover-based system, so you, you know, you'd um, lock in behind your cover, then you could peek out, aim, and it was really well built for co-op, um, so you could play with your mate, and then you, there'd be levels where you'd branch off and go two separate paths, so you would take, because you were in a squad of four, and you'd take one of your teammates one way, and then you, the person you're playing co-op with would go another way, and you could interact and support each other as you go in these different routes. Um, but the game was just so compelling. You played as Marcus Phoenix um, and your best mate Dom Dominic Santiago, and his wife was captured by the um, you know the, the the locust. And Gears of War Two is all about going on the offense, where you're trying to um, uh, sort of root out the, the locusts and get to their hearts and crush them. But you'd have different types of enemies. Um, you had a, a mulcher, which had a big cool gun that would grind. You'd have these shield ones, I forgot what their name was. Um, you had these reapers, you had these um, which were like, um, kind of like flying endermen I suppose. Um, uh, and then all these cool weapons, uh, sort of like the Hammer of Dawn, which is basically you laser targeting a big um, satellite laser beam. Fantastic Gears of War 2 Epic Horde mode was phenomenal as well, which was a, again a sort of round based system. See how long you can survive in. I am. Um, yeah, I really enjoy these round based games. And seeing how long you can survive, just really, really top class. So I'd, um, I'd highly recommend it. universe. 
that's almost called the Twilight Realm, um, which um, you know, turned Link into a wolf, and you had your uh, sort of sidekick. Uh, you always have a sidekick, uh, whether it's Navi the fairy, or um, oh, what's the one in the Skyward Sword, the the blue sword? Book I've forgotten. Um, and yeah, you would um, you, know, you have this little imp princess floating imp thing called Midna, and she would guide you when you're in your dog form, and you'd have to sort of do these sort of challenges to collect light orbs by using your dog senses. And the Twilight World had their own enemies, and it's just such a brilliant, fantastical world with so many cool different sort of characters and creatures, side quests, you know, book collecting, you know, fishing, riding your horse, such great combat, um, sort of mechanics as well, really is such a, a brilliant game, it looked gritty, um, after, because it came out after Wind Waker, which was a more sort of cell shaded stylized game, and they sort of went back to a more realistic view, but for me, Twilight Princess is just some of the best dungeons in the game, and it just, it's, it's just an absolute blast to, to play through. One of these sort of gripes on it can be that um, some of the repeat activities you have to do does get a little bit, um, well, repetitious, a bit repetitive, but for me, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's certainly a, well, it's it's my second favourite Zelda game in just a, an all-round fantastic time. Okay, now I'm going to have to get some pizza on the final slice for the final three. The final three uh, games. So, let's get that like that. I'm just kind of trying to assemble my, my pizza. Are you ready? So you could put more attachments on your gun, um, your weapons, you had the perk. 
could just use always still 357. Oh yeah, because you had like predator missiles and stuff, you had heartbeat sensors, you had these thermal scopes. Just, you know, for me, so many fun memories with Modern Warfare 2.
words, I'd be keen to return to the world, but yeah, for me, that would be my second. And now, Thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. 
beautiful that pizza delicious pizza very much recommend it and thank you for listening to my top 10 games let me know in the comment section down below what are your top three top five top 10 games and if you are new you know subscribe uh, we upload wednesdays and sundays try to be on time on half seven um if you want to get involved in the q a maybe check out the membership it might be for you for some exclusive content uh, but um you know, just thank you for watching you know, if you drop a like mega thank you very much appreciate it if you didn't like a dislike hey that's fair play honest review but thank you ever so much and uh, i'm gonna go quickly edit and upload this um so you can ask guys can watch so i'll see you all very soon so lots of love as always my friends